Hello guys and welcome back to another one of my videos. Today we are going to be covering, as in the comments shown right here, we are going to be covering the warrior class next as we have done the mage and the archer previously. If you want to check out that, uh, feel free to go check out my channel. I have the archer um, crossbow path covered and also the mage path covered. So if you guys want to check that out, feel free. Uh, just a reminder that I have all the codes, all the available codes right now in my bio. So if you want to claim all of them and just get a bunch of free rewards, feel free to do so. Also, I need two more invite codes. I need two more invite codes to finish my uh, invite code thing. So if you want to use my invite code for some rewards as well, feel free to do it. All will be in my bio. Anyways, uh, enough yapping. Uh, let's get right into the video. We are going to be checking out the... Warrior class, uh, preferably the bottom path. So, what is the warrior class? So again, uh, as I say in every single video, these three classes, rock, paper, scissors, uh, the warrior is the strongest against the archer. So why, why is that? Let's go into the warrior class and let's understand how this works. So, the warrior class, again, deals the same amount of percentage damage as all the other classes. The only difference here is that the counter damage received uh, by targets is increased. So it lasts 5 seconds, similar to the other ones. Uh, and you also get passive, 30% more defense, and counter plus 30%, and counter multiplier plus 30. So do we know what counter is? If you are not aware of what counter is, basically every time you get attacked, you have a chance to attack more back. Uh, kind of like the archer attacks a lot, like really fast. The archer is based around attack speed and combo. So if you're getting attacked a lot, with, especially with basic attacks, you're more likely to counter more, if that makes sense, which means you're gonna be destroying archers, which is why if in your server, you, have, you see that you have a lot of archers and you're trying to prioritize PVP, Late game, definitely switch to warrior class and you're going to be climbing the PvP ranks, especially. Uh, against the wizard, of course it's a little bit weaker because the wizard doesn't rely a lot on basic attacks and fast attack speed. The wizard's more on ability damage, so uh, you're less likely to attack, uh, attack more or get more counters against the wizard. But with the archer, you're going to get a lot of counters. So that is why the uh, warrior class is strong against the archers. So... You can take two paths, you can take the Swordsman and the Axe Warrior. Personally, I think the Axe Warrior path is better. Now they're both, they both can be strong of course, and it's a matter of preference, but let's look at the difference between these two. So the top path gives you damage resistance, the bottom path gives you counter damage 140%. So again, if you're fighting archers, you're going to be dealing a lot of huge damage because you're counter uh, multiplier is already 30 percent plus counter chance 30 more percent and then your passive increases the counter damage received by targets by range by 60 percent so that's that's just this is really big so once you hit level 70 as an axe warrior you're going to become a berserker you'll get reflect 80 percent of basic attack damage when hit so as you can see here clearly the Berserker class is meant to counter the archers, so if you're a Berserker, you're going to be destroying archers most of the time. You're reflecting 80% of basic attack damage. Wizards don't really rely a lot on that, it's more on their ability damage, and archers do. So you're going to be reflecting 80% of their basic attack damage uh, when hit. So that's insane. That's going to be pretty good for PvP. Then you go into a Warmonger. I call it the Warmonger, but it's Warmonger. Okay, and then once you are in this class, your last one is increase attack by 3% for every 10% of HP lost. So, again, if the battles are getting tighter and you're about even with your opponent, this uh, passive skill might just be able to get you the win. As if you're both down to like the 5% 5, 5 left of health, you might just be able to beat him because of this. So the active skill stays pretty much the same. And then once you become the Warbringer, which is arguably could be one of the best 
late classes, late game PvP classes. Uh, so let's see what it does. So as you can see, it increases the active skill damage by a huge amount. And counter damage received by targets within the range still 60%. Uh, lasting for 8 seconds, launch targets into the air when countering within 5 seconds. So, I mean, that's pretty big. You are launching targets in the air when countering within 5 seconds. So, I'm not sure if launching them in the, in the air is like a type of stun. Like, they won't be able to attack or do anything while they're in the air. Not sure. If it is, comment down below and let me know. Because I am not the Warbringer class. Although, I am planning to switch once I hit uh, probably 120. Uh, I'm still a bit unsure, but it's really a matter of like what you see around in your server. If you see that everyone's going Archer, then going Axe could get you ahead in uh, PvP. Although, I will say the difference between the Archer class and the Axe class is that Archer is way better for PvE, and it's also strong in PvP. Um, later into the game, I would say this class is good for PvP, but again, I feel like this class can fall shorter when it comes to campaign. Although it's still pretty strong, uh, definitely you are, you might see yourself struggling a little bit uh, later into the into the game if you're picking the Warbringer class. At least from what I've heard from some people who have swapped, a couple of people on my server tell me that generally the melee class does suffer a little bit on the campaign side or PvE side. So yeah. Uh, this is the pretty much covers the Warbringer uh, path. Now let's look at what you should be having as a Warbringer. So, as you guys can see, most of your damage is going to be coming from the fact of your counters. So, what gear you should have. As you can see, I'm still the Archer right now, like same as last video. But generally, what you want to have um, for the warbringer or any melee class you want to have a uh, counter you want to make sure you have a lot of counter in all of these um what else could you use counter helps regeneration could be good um uh, you want to have as a melee class you want to have high defense and a lot of counter strike as you can see i have one right here that has almost six percent counter strike that would be extremely good for the uh Warbringer class, the melee classes. So yeah, make sure you really try to get, for the most part, get the regeneration could help, crit rate could help. Crit rate's just good in general. Uh, but most of your damage is gonna be coming from your Counter Strike. So definitely try to get a bunch of Counter Strike all under your gear. Um, and then let's see what else can we cover. So we're actually gonna look at uh, we're gonna look at souls. If you haven't unlocked souls yet, then don't worry about it. Uh, I'm just going to cover them real quick because this is just more for a beginners rather than late game. So if you do have souls unlocked, what should you have? Um, as you can see, I'm the archer. I have basic attack damage. Huge. I'm pretty sure... So you want to make sure you're leveling up your HP bonus. You want to make sure you're leveling up your... Mainly the counter damage. Counter, you make sure you get this up really high. Level that up. I would only level it up once you get a red one. Uh, but if you're kind of struggling, then it's okay to level up just a little bit. The only reason why I have these leveled up in the first place is because I'm doing the soul event right now, so I want to make sure I'm spending my souls. I just got this basic attack damage for me, which is pretty big. So yeah, you want to level up your counter damage, leveling up your defense bonus, and your HP. You, so you want to have a lot of health and defense, and a lot of uh, counter damage. You want to make sure that you get that counter damage up. Uh, my server just got its reset, so that's why I have a bunch of red things all over. So yeah, uh, that pretty much covers the essential parts of the Warbringer. Now we're going to be looking at pets. So one last thing I wanted to show you guys that I didn't do on the previous videos. So you're welcome, uh, melee classes. You're going to get a little bit more ahead of the other classes. Uh, I have this for you guys. You can see the stat priorities for the melee class. So this is more specifically around the Berserker, but you could use this as a reference for the Paladin, which is the class above. So, stat priorities if you're the melee, and we're gonna do this real quick so we can move on to the pets. You wanna have Counter Strike, Counter Damage, Attack, Crit Rate, and then everything else. So, Counter Rate, 
counter damage and then attack crit rate everything else for your prayer statue of course this is also early game so there's a couple of things which you could use for your class global hp global defense global attack and then once you unlock uh the s tier stats on the prayer you could prioritize mainly counter damage because your counter damage is you're going to be dealing most of your damage off your counters so you want to do counter damage your global attack because global attack boosts everything and then global defense those three in that order for your payer statue all right let's move on to the pets all right so the long-awaited tier list is here for the pals so as we can see for the Berserker class, we are going to have the chickens in A tier, the sprites in B, the birds in B tier. This is B on mostly everything except the uh, mage, but I personally believe that just having your, uh, er, your energy on the slimes, having these slimes are just good in every single class. So personally, I would put it in A tier for everything. Of course, the wizard who is dealing most damage off the skills is gonna be better but i think these are good in general pandas pandas give you uh i believe hp region so as a melee class who is supposed to be like more tanky and is able to outlast its opponents the panda is gonna be uh pretty decent the deer is also really good damage reduction then we have the cats i wouldn't have the cats equipped really unless you have anything or unless you don't have anything better um and then we're gonna have these I'm not sure really what they do, but we're going to be looking at the pets in game anyways and just going over the best ones that you should pick and prioritize. Uh, cactuses don't equip that shit. I'm sorry, but they're not equipped the cactuses. Now, moving on to the other set of pets we have here. So the banana, don't equip it. Toothpaste might be one of the best pets you can get your hands on early game. Um, the dragon and then the immortal dragon, I mean, they're all right. Uh, if you have it equipped and you have nothing else, could work. Now the turtle, immortal turtle, really good for this class. The the like el electronic uh, dog, really OP too. And then the last one, eh, I mean, if you have pets that deal damage, then it's gonna be good. But overall, I I don't know about the last one. So yeah, um, let's go into the game and let's look at the pets all right so now that we're in game let's take a look at the pets and let's try to see what's up so what would i equip if i was a berserker class let's take a look here so if i was early game i would pick maybe the panda you know just get some hp regen um uh, no, do not equip cactuses, guys. I don't think the cactuses are just good at all. Even if you get a red cactus, unless you don't have anything else, I would uh, move away from equipping it at all. It's something that I learned the hard way. They're just not good. So, uh, yeah, if early game, equip the panda. Toothpaste is good because it increases your counter damage. That's exactly what you need. Uh, it increases your counter by 8%, not your counter damage, but... It's just, that's still very good. So early game, toothpaste could be good. Uh, moving later into the game, like legendaries, we can have the snow sprite, reducing their attack speed by 10%. Uh, that's all right. The panda here, the panda too. Uh, the deer, the deer is also very good. Having, uh, having skill damage is also good. Uh, I, I think it's good for every class, to be honest. I don't think specifically it's just good for the mage. Then, the snow goblin. So, this is also good for the melee class. Because, I mean, if you're going against archers, they're going to be attacking insanely fast. So, reducing their attack speed uh, is pretty good. Now, moving on to the red pets. This is when things really start to stand out. And you got to start thinking more about what you should be equipping. Uh, I personally would have the Kung Fu Master 100%. You need to have this class if you're going melee. Uh, Angel Deer could also help a lot. Then having the Snow General. And for your last two, you could go for damage. So anything that gives you damage, it's up to you. 
maybe have the mecha dragon if you want to go for like a crit melee or something that gives you skill damage like the piercer beast moving on to the immortals the, uh, this is what we really care about so the turtle why do we want the turtle when your hp is below 50 percent you gain a shield equal to 30 percent of max hp so the turtle is going to keep you alive in fights this is like having a um, second mushroom shield which is pretty good this thing is pretty insane that could be something that either wins or uh probably wins you fights most of the time and then we are going to go to the electric pup so the, the reason why the electric pup is the best pet probably to have on the berserker is because it increases your counter damage by 60 percent and restores one percent of your lost hp on counter so if you're landing counters you are gonna be unkillable so just take this into account you have regeneration on the panda which increases by 40 percent so if you have high hp regen plus like all these other things that give you hp regen you are going to be healing back a lot especially here it restores one percent of your lost hp on counter you can make a crazy combo with these pets so what would i have if i was the the warmonger class i would have electric pup i would 100 percent have the hipster turtle and then I have a, I'm not sure about the wealthy lizard. It said it's good on it, but I mean, it's good on every class apparently. So I would have these two 100% equip these two. Maybe the angel deer as my third, panda 100% as my fourth, and then for my fifth pet, I would have anything that might give me more damage. So I could try to get a little bit damage in. If you're struggling with damage, you could try to do that. Or you could equip the Snow General. So the Snow General, Panda, Turtle, Deer, and the Electric Pup. And you're going to be an absolute tanking beast. So you could do that. Or if you don't want to and you want more damage, you could equip something else that gives you damage. That is, uh, that is up to you. I personally think those are good. So now let's move on to the skills and let's see what that's about. Alright, cool. So now we're at the skills. I try to make myself as tiny as possible so I don't block any of the things in the tier list. So, for the warrior class, let me just look down, mage, archer, okay cool, we're at the correct one. So, for the warrior class, let me just put this here, in god tier, we're gonna have most immortal skills, I mean most immortal skills are just pretty good in general. The, the cactus, and then we're gonna have an S tier, we're gonna have the dragon uh, ability, which you can only get from the family brawl, so the only ones you can get from... Um, I believe the this this one right here, the SS tier, the dragon one, you can only get that from Family Brawl. And then the same goes for the card one and then the A tier one, the first one on A tier. So this is what it generally looks like. Let's go more in depth on why uh, the warrior class is good. We're going to go for God, SSS, and S. And then the rest, uh, they're not as important, of course, so we're not going to be looking at them. Uh, for a long time. So yeah, let's move into game and explain why and which ones you should have equipped. Alright, cool. So now we're back in game. Let's take a quick look at the skills. So as we can see from what the game said, apparently this is really good on the melee class. So why is it good? This this uh, skill isn't relatively like, oh, you should only have this on the melee class. But the reason why I think it's good on the melee class is because this isn't a skill that plays around having a lot of like skill damage you know what I mean so what this skill basically does is that it causes targets to lose 1.5% of their max HP per five seconds now if you were a mage this wouldn't be something that being a mage the being a mage would maybe increase the ability damage but it wouldn't increase the amount of uh, HP that they're losing so if you are a warrior who can't really make, you know, having that skill damage, this ability is just going to do big damage in general, and it isn't something that you have to have high ability damage to have. So, because relatively even the wizard will have the same, the same, the same thing, 1.5% uh, of the max HP reduced per second. So that's why it's so good on the melee class who uh, lacks that ability damage so that's a pretty good skill to have the blitz assault blitz assault is good on almost every single class it just provides you three seconds of 
damage immunity plus that huge damage so it's good the clone strike why is the clone strike absolutely s s s tier on the melee class you're cloning yourself right and you deal 200 percent of damage with each basic attack that's I, in my opinion, the best ability maybe for the archer. Uh, maybe not, but it's there. It's on the top. But relatively, I'm thinking maybe if you clone strike yourself, you could get even more counter if your clone starts countering. I don't know if your clone can counter, but I mean, it would only make sense that you could. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm maybe I'm right. Uh, comment down below if, uh, if you guys know that answer. I'm not the war. Or I don't have the skill and I'm not the warbringer path. So I wouldn't know, but that is something worth checking out. But again, still insanely good on this class. Then we have the 100 slashes. Uh, deal of 4,663 damage and gain 20% basic attack damage resistance. And 0 0.5 attack damage bonus based on current HP for high seconds. So that's going to be pretty good on the melee class too. You're gaining basic attack damage resistance, which again, archers are going to be doing a bunch of their damage off of basic attack damage. So 100 slashes, absolutely necessary. Uh, the Windbone Arrow. Let's go to Amazon. Uh, for 5 seconds, during this period, any non-skill damage. Uh, I mean, it's worth maybe experimenting. I'm not too sure, to be honest. Crimson Moonfall. I mean, not really going to look at that one. Dragonic R Resonance. Followed by 0 2% target HP. Okay, so, from what I read from this one, your initial damage is followed by a 0.5 second delay, then you're dealing 2% of the target's max HP as damage, and then additionally deal an extra 1% damage of the target's max HP for every 10% damage resist. So, that could be pretty good. Um, definitely wouldn't be god tier, it would be in the tier below. But, I mean, if you get it, absolutely equip it, if you don't have anything else. Wordly Snare... Uh, you're not gonna be doing much crit rate on the warrior class, I believe, so... I mean, it's alright. Not the worst, not the best. And then star array, you should avoid it unless, again, you have nothing else. But if you have somehow star array and you don't have anything else, then I, don't, I have no idea what you're doing. Uh, so yeah, you don't want to have that. So, what would I have equipped if I was a warrior class? There's a couple things you want to have. So first, I would have the clone strike 100%. Then maybe blade pierce. Uh, you could have this equipped, technically. You could have this equipped, because your counters are non-ability damage. So this could work. Uh, that would be more worth experimenting, so we don't know yet. So I would have Clone Strike, Blade Pierce, and then maybe 100 Slashes. And then if I'm doing Family Brawl, I would like to have Nature's Renewal, and also have Shroom Shield, because those are just no matter what class you're playing, you want to have those equipped in Family Brawl. In PvP, you might not need to equip Nature's Renewal. You could just get away with maybe maybe having the Shroom Shield. But, I mean, having these two the whole time, I mean, they're game savers. Especially for the melee class, who, if you have the Panda, a lot of HP regen. Here, you're gaining, you're recovering health. Here, you are gaining a shield uh, equals to 20% of your max HP, so having... High HP on the melee class is going to be good in general. So, yeah, guys, this covers the melee class, uh, the the specifically the Berserker class. I hope I did a better job than the other ones have covered. I personally think I did. If you guys have any questions, because of course I can't cover everything in one video. Any questions, any doubts, any concerns, any comments, make sure you guys comment down below uh, what you guys want me to do next. Or if there's any questions you guys have, um, I will be answering all of them. Uh, just one reminder, all the codes are in my bio. If you want to get ahead, make sure you're claiming those codes. And my invite code too, because I only have two more invites remaining. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your guys' support. Alright, catch you later. Peace.